James 3, 1 through 4. Not many of you should become teachers, self-constituted censors or reprovers of others. My brethren, for you know we teachers will be judged by a higher standard and greater severity than the other people. Thus we assume the greater accountability and more condemnation. So it's saying teachers have a role, an important role, and will be judged by what they teach. If what they teach is falsehood and leads people astray, they'll be judged by that. Many take advantage of this of the opportunity to teach to manipulate people into thinking one error or believing some agenda rather than just promote and serve the Lord by the word. They um, many false teachers put themselves on a high level and teach their agenda, and and God said, and James saying through the Lord here in His book that they'll be held accounted for that. And those who do teach need to focus on Christ and His Word rather than self. Which means that things that are going to step on toes are going to be taught, but also things that encourage as well are to be taught. And there's to be a balance as Christ leads it. Um, we need to simply teach one way or the other, I feel, at all times. Sometimes Christ will want us to bring a message of encouragement. Sometimes it's a message of reproach. Because Scripture has all these. So it ain't just one or the other. And those who go on the severity on either issue typically ain't following God's guidance. <laughs> So they'll be held accountable to, for this. Also, it's saying that they're to live in a higher standard. Now, this isn't saying that they're to be living in a, a standard. People put them on that pedestal where they're perfect. It's just saying that we're going to be role models as teachers. So we should try to strive to do better job because we're an example. Anytime you stand before people, you're an example. Whether it's teaching or just being the leader of songs, you're still that example. It's just it's James is relating to teaching here, and he's saying, and what he's saying is because they're that example, they should live up to a higher stand, standard because they're going to be a role model. Verse 2 For we all often stumble and fall and offend in many things. He is fully developed character, wait, many things. And if anyone does not offend in speech, never says the wrong things, he will fully develop character. He is a fully developed character and a perfect man, able to control his body and curb his na entire nature. So what he's now saying is teachers will mess up. Um, he's not saying that we're, teachers are meant to be perfect. Um, He's given the he's given one attribute in verse first, and he's saying, "Don't take it this far. Realize they're not perfect. Yes, they'll be held to a higher standard, but they're still not perfect. So do not hold them to the standard of perfection, because they're not God." Is what he's saying here, and he's saying also to the teachers, saying, "You're going to offend some people, and you're going to say some things that are wrong." It's how we get back up, which is also a lesson, because we ain't perfect, so we're going to make mistakes. But how we make things right with God is also an example to other people. What we do when we fall. Because there's going to be a lot more people that look at us what happens after we fall. Because they're going to be watching us some and hoping that we fall and seeing where that comes from then. And oftentimes... Um, the world look, will look more towards when we fall. So it matters what we do after we fall to a greater degree sometimes than what we're doing before. And so I believe James is going into that and giving teachers in the church that, that he's writing to that inspiration and 
idea. Verse 3. If we set bits in the horses' mouths to make them obey us, we can turn their whole bodies about. So he's talking about the tongue here. And he goes into that. He's talking about speech, the way we carry our mouth. Um, this isn't just the words we say, but the tone we say them. This isn't just the... And the attitude they come out in. Um, so what he's saying is if we can't control our speech, then how are we supposed to control anything else? If we can't, which he's also realizing and stating that it's a very difficult thing to control our speech. It ain't just something, it's something that God's got to train us up in because our tongue and the words we can say can carry us in a different direction. So we got to let God bridle our tongue. It ain't us that needs to bridle it. We need to let the Lord do it. And let the Lord choose our wording. This isn't saying that sometimes we won't go against the bridle and He'll have to draw us back because that will happen. If it wasn't the case, then we wouldn't need Him to bridle our tongue to begin with. But the fact that we need to shows that, yeah, sometimes we'll go off in the wrong direction and He'll have to draw us back in. Verse 4, Likewise, look at the ships, though they are so great and driven... By rough winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the impulse of helmsmen determines. So what he's saying is, as ships are um, controlled by a very small rudder, don't let us be controlled by negative speech, negative words. Let them be positive. Because oftentimes what we say is what's in the heart. We, we need our heart to be focused to God. 